It's absolutely aptacular. The Subject Cinema Android app. Everything you need to be a rabid Subject Cinema fan. Subject Cinema, 3-Minute Weekend, Tuesday Digidex, and Front Row 5 and 10. All right at your fingertips and available instantly. Plus, email and voicemail links, Facebook and Twitter hookups, Patreon support specials, and more is coming real soon. Don't just listen. App it. The all-in-one Subject Cinema podcast app. Android version available now at Google Play or on PNR Network websites. Amazon and iPhone apps coming soon. Don't delay. Download today. Blueberry. This podcast is a member of the Blueberry Network. Blueberry. No ease. That's Blueberry. B-L-U-B-R-R-Y. Dot com. Blueberry dot com. This podcast is a proud member of the Lamb Podcasting Network. Find the network at largeassmovieblogs.com. Okay, what do you think looks best? The iron suit or or the shield or or maybe the, the, the metal arm for the costume? You think, um I mean uh, this will probably set off the, the this will set off the metal detectors. I can't do that one. It'll set off the metal detectors in the next town if you wear all of it. <laughs> I better stick with the with just the shield then. Don't you think? Yeah, groovy. What about you? What do you mean what about me? Don't you think the cape is me? I mean I told you a long red cape would be perfect. You're for you. supposed to be Black Widow, not Doctor Strange. Well, yeah, but we had a little problem with the skin type black outfit. Oh, for Pete's sake. It accidentally fell into the garbage disposal. Uh, Oops. Along fine, with some Avenger you're going to be. You can be Mr. Mr. Pontificate while you while 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 being silly. Well, I have the red cape. Maybe I could go with Thor. Let me just grab me only here at No. I'll give you a second. No, I you're not ever going to pick that up. Sorry. No, I can't. I'm worthy. No, you're not. I... Oh. <laughs> I just tore something. <clears throat> Ow. It's Avengers Week, in case you didn't get the idea, and we've got that and a lot more right here, right now. I'm T.C. Kirkham. I'm Kim Brown. Hold on, folks. It's going to be a bumpy evening. Here on Subject Cinema This Week. Medic. Stand by to receive our transmission. <laughs> this town needs an enema. <laughs> Celebrating a decade of film podcasting. Lasting out of B-Town, USA. You're tuned into Subject Cinema. With T.C. Kirkham and Kim Brown. Directive. Oh, behave. <laughs> yeah. I volunteer as tribute. Suppose you run your business and let me run mine. Here's looking at you, kid. Before we get started. Great, so now I'm going to have to spend my evening with you at the hospital while you're in traction for your back trying to hold up that damn hammer that doesn't even exist anymore. I'm fine. I'm fine. Uh, and, I, and I don't appreciate you saying I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. It's not that I'm not worthy because I'm evil. It's that I'm not worthy because I'm deranged. If you weren't evil, There's if you if you weren't worthy, uh, uh, if you had evil, true evil in you, your cape wouldn't come near you. Good point. Good. Point. Welcome to Subject Cinema. I'm T.C. Kirkham. Hi, I'm Kim Brown. Subject Cinema number 605, day and date, April yeah. 29th, wow. 2018. Woo. Um, End of the I'm month. sorry we missed last week. I yeah. we had a, a few logistical issues, and I was having some severe neck issues. I was off my neck for like almost ten days, mm-hmm. and uh, it, it was not fun. I yeah. have had tried to get you know just muddled through everything, but it was hard for me to get everything else done, and trying to get the Eurovision stuff done, and trying to get the film festival stuff. It's been a long week. How was your week? Not bad. 
you oh, know, good. other oh, than good. other than halfway drowning a couple of times at work. You so know. this this little movie came out on Friday. Yeah, this little movie, you know, little little <laughs> obscure little obscure flick. You might not have heard of it. Yeah, you know? and we're we're gonna just not beat around the bush anymore. Let's head off to the cinema and to the cosmos with the longest freaking cast in history. As a courtesy to all in attendance today, please refrain from smoking or talking during our future presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. The movie is about to begin. The main screen. the universe if he gets all the infinity stones he can do it with the snap of his fingers just like that tell me his name again Thanos we got one advantage he's coming to us we have what Thanos wants so that's what we use. Okay, kiddies, it's finally here. The movie that culminate is the culmination of 18 huge films in the past 10 years. Storylines that have been intertwined throughout most of them. And a lot more. All with the biggest baddie of the entire universe for right now. An all-star cast, we'll go through who they are later, in Marvel's Avengers Infinity War. Give us the rundown. It all comes down to this. Avengers Infinity War is dealing with what we have been dealing with for the entirety of the Marvel Universe in one way or another. Going all the way back to the Avengers when we see this shadowy figure at the end end credits where we all, all of us who were comic book fans went, this beep just got real. We should also point out before we get started. Mm Mm-hmm. Before we get started, does anybody want to get off? Anyway, um... Some of us got off at... Never mind. We um, will not be giving spoilers. No. And we're not going to go... It's just going to be your standard review. We will not give Take spoilers. Take it away. Yes. Um, as I mentioned, the, the, the Infinity Stones have been brought up and seen in more than one of the Marvel films. The Infinity Stones are these stones that have dominion over certain properties, space, time, power, the mind, etc., so on and so forth. If you bring all of these stones together in what is refer- in a device called the Infinity Gauntlet, you have the power to do everything. And I mean everything with a capital E. The problem is that the Infinity Stones have been sought out for a very long time by a figure known as Thanos, who is also known as the Mad Titan. That gives you an idea. We are not dealing with someone who is going to get all these stones together and go, let's make the universe a place full of sunshine and puppies. No. Um, (laughs) Thanos wants to decide who gets to live and who gets to die. On well, a, that's not quite right. But how does that figure? He wants to bring balance. He to the wants universe. to bring balance to the universe because he's decided right. the universe is out of balance. Right. Exactly. There you go. Okay. Good well, for you. That clear. Yeah. Yeah. Can I bring up someone who's referred to as the Mad Titan? May not have the best cognitive thinking in the entire <laughs> world, but I digress. At this point in the, we, we're dealing, when we come into the film, we come in right where we actually just left, at the end of Thor Ragnarok, where, uh, Thanos and who he refers to as his children, I don't know if they're actually offspring. No, they're I, not. They're followers. Because I don't want to think about that at all. Um, Proxima Midnight, Corvus Glaive, Ebony Maw, and Cull Obsidian, because these all sound like nice people. Um, <laughs> attack the Asgardian ship, which has the entire population of Asgard on it, fleeing from their home world after the after what happened in Thor Ragnarok. 
Um, no spoilers here, but anybody who thinks the ship makes it out all right, intact, and everybody's having coffee, you're wrong. Um, going forward, we have the battle going on between damn near all of Earth's heroes and people beyond Earth, people like the Guardians of the Galaxy, who, who now include teenage Groot. He's not little teeny, sweet, adorable Groot anymore. He's taller, surlier, and apparently uses... Obsessed with video games. And obsessed with a video game called Defender, um, which I haven't seen since... The um, last time the Reagan Star Wars era? was on Earth. <laughs> the anyway. Reagan era, maybe? Um, the Avengers, the Guardians, everybody that they can find are all trying to band together to prevent Thanos from getting all of the Infinity Stones. Well, I think we should say that Earth was unaware that it was going on until something happened in that first thing you mentioned to mm -hmm. let the heroes on Earth know that Thanos is on his way. I'm not going right. to tell you what it is, but it, it was something well, that they, happened. Well, the, the Avengers were clued in about the Infinity Stones in Age of Ultron. Right, but they didn't know he was coming that soon. No, they didn't know, and they, they knew someone was searching for the Infinity Stones. We find out that the someone who is w searching for the Infinity Stones is the worst case scenario person who could be searching for the Infinity Stones, capital, capital W, capital C, capital S. So we have these ongoing battles between Thanos' henchmen and the, and the Guardians of the Galaxy and the Avengers. We have people getting captured. We have people getting tortured. Certain hot people getting tortured. Not happy with that. Um, and a lot of crazy, some of the most awesome fight scenes I have ever seen. And an ending that ah. we will not say what the ending is. <laughs> no, I thought you were going to give a little bit more detail about the film, but it's if you're not going to, it's then... not. Well, the thing is, the, the really terrible thing is, you could try and boil this down as, oh, it's oh, a you battle. Could try. You, you could try and be simplistic, which a lot of non-comic people will do, and be like, oh, it's a, ba you know, it's a battle of good and evil. It isn't though. It's a battle of life versus non-life. And that is even worse, in my opinion. All right. Here we go. This is going to take a while. There okay. are a ton of people in this film. Sit down and get comfy. Robert Downey Jr. is Iron Man, uh, a.k.a. Tony Stark. Chris Hemsworth is Thor. Mark Ruffalo is Bruce Banner, a.k.a. The Hulk. Chris Evans is Steve Rogers, a.k.a. Captain America. Scarlett Johansson is Black Widow. Benedict Cumberbatch is Doctor Strange. Don Cheadle as Rhodey Rhodes. <clears throat> Tom Holland as Spider-Man. Chadwick Boseman as T'Challa, a.k.a. Black Panther. Paul Bettany as Vision. Elizabeth Olsen as Scarlet Witch. Anthony Mackie as Falcon. Sebastian Stan as Bucky Barnes, a.k.a. White Wolf, which is referred to for the first time in this film. Mm -hmm. Tom Hiddleston as Loki. Idris Elba as Hemdall. Peter Dinklage as Etri. Benedict Wong as Wong, Palm Clementief, Clementief, I'm not sure how you pronounce her last name, as Mantis, Karen Gillan as Nebula, Dave Batista as Drax, Zoe Saldana as Gamora, Vin Diesel as the voice of Groot, Bradley Cooper as the voice of Rocket Raccoon, Gwyneth Paltrow as Pepper Potts, uh, Josh Brolin as Thanos, and Chris Pratt as Star-Lord, a.k.a. Peter Quill, plus appearances by Benedicio del Toro and, of course, the obligatory Stan Lee cameo. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> this is truly, I'm, I'm going to say this from just re references, I'm not trying to be Mr. Supermarketer here. This is truly the first true, I, probably, superhero epic. Mm -hmm. In the fact that this epic, as in epic scope, epic story, and the best, the, the best and the worst part about it is, it's only the first half of the story. Mm -hmm. So, what'd you think? As if I didn't know from the meltdowns. What a story. <laughs> what an absolute amazing story. Uh, there are parts that are really funny. There are parts that are laugh out loud, hilariously funny. Um, 
And there are parts that are exciting. And there are parts that are beautifully romantic for those of us who ship people. And I totally ship people. I don't care. If you don't like it, She's fight She's talking me. about Wanda and Vision, by the I way. I totally just, just, ship. Just to be out there. I totally ship Wanda and Vision. been going on in, in the comics since the 70s. So. Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> uh, I sh- no, I ship a few other people, too. And I will fight people if they tell me I can't. But when it gets serious, I mean serious we're talking serious as a effing heart attack. Um, I won't give away anything about the end other than the fact that um, I will I will say this. I won't call this a spoiler. You can it's Go ahead, yeah. It's more simply cuz I love you guys. <laughs> um, if you are a person who cries easily. <laughs> Um, yeah. Usually when people start something like that, if you're a person who cries easily, you usually hear bring a tissue or a towel. I'm not even going to tell you that. Bring a sponge. Bring a sponge and a bucket. A large sponge. <laughs> bring a large sponge. Put it in your lap. Let's put it this <laughs> way. I'm going to be totally honest, and she's going to get pissed at me. She had the biggest meltdown she's had. Second note, this is the third biggest meltdown she's ever had in a public theater. The biggest was March of the Penguins, and the second biggest was The Last Jedi. So we're going to be, and, and she did most of that at home. So it's yeah. like, <laughs> this was a major issue at the end of the film, or near the end. I, well, actually, from about halfway be, through to the end no, of the film. No, no, there, there's a certain point. No, there's a certain there's point where... There's two or three it, segments different. Uh, there's areas. a very specific point where it started, and by the end of this film... I had my hands pressed up against my mouth because if I didn't, I would have started to scream. Yeah. And that's not being that's not being facetious yeah. or melodramatic or anything like that. And that's not and that wasn't for effect. That was because my heart was being ripped into eight hundred different directions. We'll, we'll talk about and that in a minute. Thrown on the <laughs> ground like so much red confetti. I just realized something. Mm-hmm. I'm not done with the cast. Hang on a minute. Okay. <laughs> in addition to those names I mentioned earlier, we also had brief appearances by Dana Gorea Guerrera as Okea uh, Oki. Is that how you pronounce her name? Head of the security in uh, in uh, Wakanda. Letitia Wright as T'Challa's sister Shuri, William Hurt as Thaddeus Ross, Carrie Condon as the voice of Friday, uh, Stark's AI, Winston Duke as M'Baku, the leader of the Wakanda Mountain Tribe, the Jabari, Florence Kasumba as Ayo, a member of the Dora Milaji, Jacob Batalon for like three seconds as Peter Parker's best friend Ned, uh, and Isabella Amara as his, fr- as his friend Sally, and Tiffany S. Benson as his friend Cindy, and Ethan Dizon as his friend Tiny. There are two other cameos I'm not going to mention because they're in the post credit sequence, mm-hmm. and I think I will keep those for secret. Yeah. Um, and, oh, 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 sorry. Mm-hmm. This, this, I, the, the cast is all over the road. Playing the bad guys in Thanos' children. Mm-hmm. Terry Notary as Cole Obsidian, Tom Von Lawler as Ebony Ma, Carrie Coon as Proxima Midnight, and man, she can kick ass. And Michael James Shaw as Corvus Glaive, they also did motion captures in addition to voicing them. Mm-hmm. Those were pretty spectacular. Yeah. Okay, I think that's finally everybody. Seriously, so that ending. Oh man, that ending. Um, you mentioned the breakdown that I had at Last Jedi, and I will not deny that. <laughs> no, I won't deny that. You have the person who's had your heart I since know. you were eight years old taken from you. Mm-hmm. You're going to wind up in the bathroom bawling your eyes out, too. Yeah, but you didn't react that way when Han was killed in, in The Force Awakens. You were shocked, but you didn't react that way, and you've loved him as much. I liked Han. Okay, fine. Anyway, let's get off. I don't want to get Luke started. Luke Skywalker was the first person that made me realize that you could love a man like that. Okay, and so I was let's eight leave that at old. that so we can talk about Avengers. Okay, so. All right, anyway. Anyway. But seriously, let's the get back end, to the storyline. The line. end of this film is so wrenching. I mean, there's no other word for it. It's just wrenching. The reason that I said that about, we were talking yesterday about Thanos and all that stuff like that. The reason that I think Thanos is so damn scary is because Thanos is unlike a lot of other villains. Um, 
because a lot of other villains, you you can you know what their motivations are, and you know what Thanos' motivation is. But the thing that makes Thanos so much more dangerous than a lot of other people, in my opinion, he's a zealot. Okay. He belie- he believes what he's doing is the right thing. He believes all of this. Well, the universe is out of balance because there's too many people in it, and I'm going to fix that once I gather all the Infinity Stones. Uh He's not doing this because he hates life. He's not doing it because he wants power. He actually said, you know, when I'm done doing what I'm going to do, I'm going to rest. He's not talking about when I'm done doing what I'm doing, I'm going to take over and take, and everyone's going to, you know, I'm going to be the dictator of the universe or any crap like that. That's terrifying. Mm-hmm. That's even more terrifying than somebody, than somebody who's going to be all, I'm going to rule the universe, muhaha. I think that's more horrifying because it's this whole idea that you're so blinded by your um, vision bad choice of words i know um for what the uni- what you think the universe should be like that you're willing to do the absolute frigging unthinkable i mean you and i have talked about villains in the past and i've mentioned to you and i don't really know if you agree with me on this or not because you've never really said but i've always been like nobody thinks they're a villain Nobody wakes up and thinks, oh, I'm going to be the bad guy today. Nobody does that. Even the Nazis didn't do that. You said, you know, you saw that movie, I've, I've, the decent one. And the, I mean, the whole point of that movie was that the, those were letters between, I'm sorry, um, who were those letters between? Heinrich Himmler and his wife. Yeah. Okay. Heinrich Himmler, one of the most evil, Wicked, terrible people in the universe. He didn't think he was evil. That's my point. <laughs> I know. That's, that's why I said that. Because I knew that's where you were going. Nobody thinks what they're doing is evil or wrong or bad or whatever. The thing is, Thanos knows what he's doing is going to bring billions of people grief. But he's still like, I have to do it because I feel like in my heart it's right. That's frigging terrifying, Mm -hmm. I think. And I think Josh Brolin really pulls that off really, really well. Because a character like Thanos, you could do that in a big, arm-swinging, you know, boisterous, loud way, and he doesn't do that. And I think that that works really well. I think the whole cast is fantastic. Mm -hmm. Um, I think the story is well-paced. It is a long story, Mm -hmm. but... So is Ben Hur, and I yeah. never heard. Oh, I don't have a problem you know, I've never heard anybody bitch about how long that is. I know. Yeah. You know, considering how much money you have to pay to go to the theater anymore, the longer it is, the better it is, as far as I'm mm-hmm. concerned. Um, it's it's a gripping story. It's an exciting story. It's a tragic story, and the end of it is like, holy crap! The next movie can't get here fast enough. Mm-hmm. At least that's how I feel. Mm-hmm. How do you feel? Well, I think the applause at the end of the film from the audience, which doesn't happen very often anymore, was a pretty good indication that this movie hit the mark <laughs> with um, however many people or were in that theater, except maybe one or two, and the woman that was asking about where Aquaman was, and um, which you mentioned to me earlier. And she, me. She was saying um, something about Aquaman. I was like, what? I can't. Don't get me wrong. I really love this film. It's awesome. Um but I had a problem with the ending at first, and I was very angry and upset. Um, but after thinking about it for a couple of days, I'm not angry and upset anymore. Yay! Um, I, I, I just, it, I think, I, I mean, I was so upset on, on Friday night, not because of that, but because of what I was thinking, um, that I almost decided to walk away from everything. I was very upset because I, I felt that what I do as a journalist for Subject Cinema and for eCinema One gets sometimes in the way of my getting into the feeling of the movies. It's it's it doesn't feel as fun anymore sometimes. 
And while throughout this movie I felt it was fun, the first thing I started thinking of was like, well, what's the point when all these people have signed long contracts that guarantee them films in the future? Um, okay, so maybe that was, I mean, that's just like... We got in a bit of a tiff about that, and I came We didn't down really get in a, in a tiff. I was just being honest, and I felt that you, you know, were were not um, allowing me to be honest about it, but I had to think about what I was, where I was coming from. Yeah, but I came down too harsh on you, and that wasn't right, and I'd like to apologize. Well, you don't, you don't have to apologize. There was nothing. You didn't come down too harsh on me. I was just actually coming back from the grocery store this afternoon thinking about the film and realizing, you know, this is really a lot of fun. I can't wait to see how they put things back together. Mm -hmm. So maybe I need to, like, learn to shut that part of me off that I I have trouble shutting it off. See, I, I, I critique films, too, just like you, and I I shut it off. I turn, you know... It's I'm, hard, though, because you don't do... Oh, no, I don't want you to take offense at this. No, you work way harder at this than you I do. You do 10% of the work no, I do. No, I totally do. And and you don't keep up on the sites like I do. You nope. don't keep up on the news like I do. Nope. Yeah, I have to follow everything. You do. And, and, and you're really good at it. It's you know. It's important to me that I do that but it's also important to me that I let go of that stuff and be in the moment be a fan Mm -hmm. and we need to see it again so I can have that experience hopefully because I didn't have it at the very end of the film this time okay but I recognize that it it is a brilliant ending you do realize right out of the comic books yeah and it it, it's it's uh, actually worse in the comic books oh yeah I'm sure it is And I'm interested to see how they put this all back together now. Mm-hmm. So, did anybody's overall, performance really stick out with you? Overall, I liked the entire thing. I have a few complaints, okay. but nothing earth shattering. Number one, I'm still not a fan of this version of Spider Man. I like Tom Holland, he's funny as Spider Man. The problem is, he's a little too comical for me. He's supposed to be sarcastic. Here, he's like, Almost a lap dog to Tony Stark. And you didn't see that. I did. It was like, you okay, Mr. Stark? Blah, 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 blah. Oh, okay, Mr. Stark. I'm like, really? Haven't we moved beyond that? That's not how a typical teenager acts these days. No, secondly, most of them act like douchebags. And secondly, and no surprise for our fans coming from me here, too much Star-Lord. I do not like this character. And it just... Hell's surprise. I just... I, I don't know. I, I wish there was less of him and more of the other stuff going on with the Guardians than when we saw. Anyway. Chris Pratt, would you please pay him whatever it is it you owe him? Pratt. Pratt. No, I know, I know. I I'm liked Pratt in the Jurassic Park yeah, movies. Yeah, you did. Jack, I, Jurassic World movies. Yeah, actually. I just don't, don't like, like this character. character. I know. He grates on me so much, I just want to punch him. Every time he's on screen, if I knew Dave Batista, I'd call him up and say, could you punch him for me, please? <clears throat> I also think that they're not using um, supporting characters enough in certain ways in The Guardians. They didn't really do all that much with Mantis, and I like her. Yeah. Uh, she was one of the best parts of Guardians Volume 2. Well, she is important in that one scene. She's important in the whole movie, but yeah. there isn't... As Enough. much as I'd like to see. And, of course, the rest of the Guardians cast is awesome, and uh, Bradley Cooper steals the show as Rocket. And uh, it's fun when they finally get together with some of the Avengers and see what, what will transpire. Mm-hmm. So what's your score? I I give Infen- Avengers Infinity War an A. Very solid A. Mm-hmm. I give it an A-. I just... I I loved it, and it, it was great. It's just that whole thing that took me, my own mind, that took me out of the moment. Mm -hmm. And that's my fault. It's not the movie's fault, and I'm not going to blame them for that. Uh, As if you didn't know, Avengers Infinity War is showing everywhere, in regular, in 3D, in 4D, probably in 5D, 6D, 7D, and 8D, somewhere out there in the galaxy, where the Guardians of the Galaxy roam with their old beatbox and... 80s and 70s music. Anyway, if you haven't seen it, climb out from underneath the rock you've been living on and go to the theater and see it. Definitely. Okay. 
Mm-hmm. Now that we've gotten the review out of the way, yep. I want to bring this up. Okay. Avengers Infinity War is an example of everything that could possibly do- be done right about a feature film with so many stars yep. in it. Yep, yep. So, my question to you is, how badly is Warner Brothers going to look at this and screw up the next Justice League movie? On a scale of one to t- <laughs> on a scale of one to ten, are we talking on a scale of one to ten? One being the least screw up and ten being the worst screw up. Mm-hmm. Nineteen. Okay, I don't know what it is about Warner Brothers. Oh, I do. <laughs> Can I finish? Sorry. I don't know what it is about Warner Brothers that they have to have instant gratification. Because it's been proven now by Marvel that if you build things slowly, they will come and they will spend money and they will make these enormous movie films. Avengers, Infinity War, earned a hundred, two hundred and fifty million this weekend. Mm-hmm. I think it was. I didn't. I, I, mean, I saw three hundred. Three hundred and fifty million. It was some. It was some ridiculously It's not the number. biggest all-time opening. So it has to be under two hundred and sixty-two million. Oh, okay. So it must have been two hundred and fifty million, um, and because the biggest opening is Jurassic World. There, there's. Um, I mean, it proves that if you go through this slowly, you can make an epic film like this, and this mm-hmm. is truly an epic. Absolutely. Um, although it's, I notice it's Rotten Tomatoes is cleared down to an eighty-nine from where it started at ninety-nine last Friday. Thank you, DC fan. No, 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 no. That's the critics. Oh. That's the critics. Um, it's interesting that they can. They, it showed that way. Why doesn't DC try to take the same approach? I mean, do you want is, the reasons alphabetically or by well, order of the reasons? I think the reasons are number one, they don't have a Kevin Feige who is in charge of the entire Marvel universe. And they don't have the creativity to take the time to mold something. And they don't have the Marvel people, while they do have suits over them, they're not breathing down their neck. Profit now, profit now, profit now, profit now. Which seems to be what happens at Warner Brothers. Right. Warner Brothers, I'm sorry, Jack Warner would be appalled by the way some of these things have happened. He was all about the money, but he also knew when to back off. And let them do what they needed to do. This is how come we got classics in the in the fifties and sixties from the studio. Mm-hmm. Um, now, I mean, the DC universe has been so cocked up over the years. With the, I mean, I personally, I loved Man of Steel, and I liked Batman versus Superman. I loved Wonder Woman, but I loathe Suicide Squad. You liked it. I can't stand it. Um, they keep going in a up and down pattern, which says to me that Aquaman, <laughs> which is the next film in the series, is going to be a big hit like Wonder Woman is, or it's going to be so low that it's not, it's going to end up killing the entire series. So, because they have all the, Warner Brothers is also doing this multiverse thing that I don't understand. Yeah, this is confusing as hell. We're going to do another Batman in an alternate universe and a Joker movie in an alternate universe and we're going to change this and change that and do this and no, we haven't even got the movie finish, script finished yet for the most popular character in the Justice League, which turned out to be Flash. Watch, I mean, look at the, look at the re- reviews. Everybody was pointing out Ezra's Flash, Ezra Miller's Flash, was the highlight of the Justice League film. And they don't even have a script ready. And then they were going to do a straight script. And then they were going to do Flashpoint. Flashpoint is a great idea because it would let them start from scratch again. For Pete's sake. I mean, it really would. Uh, and they desperately need that over there. Don't you agree? Yeah. What is? Wh- why does Marvel keep winning at this? I mean, Marvel has yet to release a truly bad film. There have been borderline films, like The Incredible Hulk with an Edward Norton, um, <clears throat> and maybe Iron Man 2, which was kind of weak in the Iron Man films. And personally, I didn't like Guardians of the Galaxy, but... That's me. Most fans seem um, to dislike Iron Man three more than Iron Man two. Simply why? Because, well, for one, the, the most from what I've been able to see, and anybody, I mean, I've, what I've saw online, I thought Iron Man two got more hate than Iron Man three, but I well, might be wrong. Well, from what I've seen, they all hate the Thor movies. So, all of them. So, except who's for Ragnarok. all of them. Huh? Who's all no, of them? All of the Thor movies. They hate Thor, and they hate Thor. They especially hate Thor: The Dark World. Which is the lowest rating of all of the of the Marvel movies? Haters so. gonna hate. 
<laughs> well, honey, you can't I'm sorry. That. Great looks and hunky body does not make for a great story. And when it comes to Thor the Dark World, most of the fans are right. It's the weakest link in the entire Marvel Well, I'm Marvel just saying, universe. you can't, you can't, you know, it's not Chris Helmsworth falls. He looks like that and you all look like you. Um, but anyway. So shallow. I, hmm. Anyway. <laughs> um, w- look, no one's ever going to, like, accuse me of looking like Scarlett Johansson. So anyway. You do uh, me. You're sweet. You're blind, but you're sweet. Um, <laughs> well, so are you. You're living with Job of the Hut, and you won't admit it. So anyway, 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 what I think, um, there. I mean, there's so many things that that DC just does wrong, simply because they. Um, oh, jumping back to the Iron Man thing. The reason that I, the reason I've seen so many people dislike Iron Man three is because of what they wound up doing with the Mandarin. That well, yeah, he was that an was, actor. Yeah, that was a. Um, see, my problem is my problem with that is my answer to that is <clears throat> what did you want them to do? <clears throat> Have him be the whole evil Oriental character, the you know the evil Asian character? Then people would have screamed their lungs out about that. The same way they screamed their lungs out about Tilda Swinton replacing an Asian. Uh, guru in Doctor Strange. Yeah, they went from making him an Asian man into a, a Celtic woman, and you know people lost their minds about that. Which I was completely like, Marvel, what the hell? But then you have the whole China thing, where China would have been like, well, we're not having you, we're not having your movie in our country if you talk about Nepal. I mean, China, Tibet. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Tibet. My, my mistake. <laughs> but China, you know, the whole China thing, I'm not touching that. But anyway, um, the thing with DC, like, it's, it, there's a whole bunch of stuff that is a perfect storm of complete, I can't use that word. Um, it, it starts with F and ends with Y. Um, the, um, Forkery? Yeah, that word. Yeah. Um, that's fine. It's, the fact that DC does want a big hit now, they want which they have yet to produce. Right, they want it to be an instant hit with everybody, comic book fans and no, I take that back. They have done it once with, with, Wonder, with Woman. Wonder Woman. Yeah, they have too much studio meddling, and they don't understand. The biggest issue is. It's part of instant gratification. It's a side shoot of instant gratification. Nobody at DC seems to understand the concept of world building and how yeah. important that is when you have an already established universe. And that makes no sense to me since they did so well. Well, it actually does make sense to me that with the Harry Potter stuff, the Harry Potter stuff is Warner Brothers, but they so left is them. Lord, so is Lord of the Rings. And, yeah. and both of those were were already out there in book form. But right. Warner is not used to dealing with the comic fans. Right. And that's... That's and what's you also the notice you also notice for the most part I mean there were some big changes and stuff was different from the, the from the Tolkien books hi R. Chris and stuff was different in the Harry Potter stuff hi Stacy mm-hmm. but for the most part those actually were changes that made sense and even JK said so in several cases in the in the movies to books right so. But when when it comes to something like the Marvel universe or the DC universe, if y- let's let's just stick with DC because Marvel obviously knows what the frog they're doing. Uh-huh. The DC universe has been around since the nineteen thirties. Um, well, the silver, the golden age stuff has been around since uh, Action Comics, 1927. 1927. Okay, thank you. Or 1937. I'm not sure. It's in, in 30, it's 20s or 30s. Yeah. And then they faded away, except for Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman, and then came back in 1959. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah. But my point is, it's been around for more than 50 years. Superman oh, yeah. just celebrated his 80th anniversary. Mm-hmm. The people... So that would have been the 30s then. Yeah. Yeah. The people who have been reading comics and rereading comics since, you know, since back then, who raised their kids to read comics, who raised their kids to read comics, forward, 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 that's an entire world. There's a reason it's called the DC 
universe. Mm-hmm. It's not called the D.C. city block. It's not <laughs> called, you know, the D.C. small town. No. It's the D.C. universe. Right. And if you nitwits can't get your mind around the idea that you have to build it piece by piece by piece so that you have a mosaic. It, you have to look at something like this like a mosaic. Mm-hmm. And I will be the first to admit mosaics are not easy. Mosaics are a bitch. Yeah, they are. But when they're done beautifully, and when you lay that last tile, and you step back, and you go, holy crap, look what I've created. And you have this beautiful explosion of color and all kinds of amazing stuff. Well, depending on what kind of mosaic it is. It Depending on what it is. Yeah. But my point is, you step back from it, and everything fits <laughs> together perfectly. Mm-hmm. And it creates this amazing thing that grabs you by the face and drags you into <laughs> it. Yep. And if you don't do it that way, you have a bunch of tiles sticking all over the place and everybody going, what the hell is this crap? Yeah. Guess which one the DC Universe is stuck with right now. As a postscript to this discussion, two weeks ago, it was um, discovered by, I think it was Movie Web. It may have been like one of the other sites online. It was discovered by them that Warner Brothers has quietly released a casting call <laughs> should I be scared no I told you about oh, this Okay. Warner Brothers is, has quietly released actually I should have said yet another casting call for their current scripted version of the Japanese manga classic Akira <sighs> once again they are completely ignoring the Asian aspect of the film and casting Caucasian actors for a version set in Neo New York. Can you say whitewashing boys and girls? They don't. I knew this you is could. the third time no. in eight years, and they just refuse to get what the fans are telling them. Does if it, you do this movie the way you want to do it, we will destroy you. Basically, it's pretty easy. Even Davros understands stuff like that. Basically. The biggest problem with stu- with <coughs> studios, movie studios, <coughs> movie studios need to stop acting like politicians. It's actually not studios. It's Warner Brothers. Yeah, Paramount and, and yeah. Sony and the other studios seem to get it now, Warner especially Brothers, Disney. I mean, Warner Brothers needs to stop acting like certain politicians. Notice I didn't say certain parties, although one party does this more than the other. Um, <laughs> they need to stop going, we know what's best for you. Mm-hmm. Because you know what happens when you do that? We all turn around, say, F you, flip you off, close our wallets, and go to the next Marvel movie. But you know why that one party always says that? No. Because the other party's always whining about everything. So, yeah. you know, it kind of works out it when does. it comes to Washington. If you'd like to comment on this, we'd love to hear you. Subject Cinema at e cinema at, at uh, PNRNetworks.com. J.C. Kirkham. Kim Brown, Subject Cinema. All right, Kristen, I am so excited that you've decided to do a podcast with me, but what are we going to do a podcast about? There's so many other movie podcasts. we got to do something original. Well, you know, I'm a big fan of Disney movies. What about something like that? That's just kid stuff. What do we want to do that for? Did you know that The Avengers is a Disney movie? Or that Pulp Fiction is a Disney movie? Pulp Fiction is not a Disney movie. It's technically owned by Miramax, which is part of Disney. We are still going to talk about the Disney animated movies, though, right? I thought you said that was kid stuff. Well, you know, I've got two kids. i got to be a good dad and stuff. So be sure to subscribe to the Walt Set Me podcast, where we discuss the various subsidiaries of the Walt Disney Studio, including the animated movies. It's available on iTunes, Podomatic, and wherever you find great podcasts. And I swear, it's not kid stuff. The best movies! Subject Cinema! So, this year's uh, CinemaCon is coming gone. CinemaCon is the world's biggest convention for movie exhibitors. These are where the... Both the um, the indies and the and the multiplexes all get together and come together to celebrate the industry. Um, they didn't do a lot of celebrating this week. They got a lot of 
uh, great trailers for upcoming films. Mm-hmm. By the way, we had scheduled our fall pre, our summer preview issue, for, uh, show for this week. Because of difficulty getting hold of the, what we need to get a hold of, we're gonna do it next week instead. Hopefully it'll be here in time. Um, there's a lot of great stuff coming out there, but the big success story is Byron Allen. Do you guys know who Byron Allen is? When Byron we Allen, do. What we do. I've followed his career for years. When Byron Allen was 19, he was one of the youngest stand-up comics to ever st- set foot on the on the stages of the Los Angeles comedy clubs. He was tapped to be the youngest host of the NBC hit series Real People. And then, after it ended, uh, he became a behind-the-scenes guy in the industry, working at first for a number of different organizations, including NBC and HBO. And then... He found out in the early 90s, but from a friend, how much money he could make doing his own syndication. He started doing a show called Entertainers with Byron Allen, syndicated it to local local uh, outlets around the country, and slowly built up this portfolio of reality entertainment type shows that uh, became Entertainment Studios, his new his company. Um, we get a number of them in the very early morning on the weekend mm-hmm. about, um, I've forgotten what, there's one about great houses. It's like, a, they're like lifestyles, the rich and famous type right. shows. And they're fun to watch and they're presented the same way. And, and, um, they're probably cheap to buy for the studio, for the stations. Mm. Byron's Entertainment Company is now the fastest growing company in the business. He was one of the keynote speakers at CinemaCon. And he went out there and told his story about how he's how he's a self-made man. He is, I mean, I envy this guy. He's 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 my age, a little bit yeah. older, not much. And and I mean, really, well, he's now run, he runs him. a studio that is so successful. They have purchased. Uh, they currently have Chappaquiddick in theaters. They have a number of movies. And Byron last week plunked down three hundred million dollars for the Weather Channel. Yeah. I'm like, holy cow! What this is just like Byron's definitely proof that if you work hard and believe in yourself, you can succeed, and yeah. he's really succeeded. Then that's awesome. And 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 I mean, this guy, you got to keep his eye on, on your eye on Entertainment Studios because they're moving up fast. He's uh-huh. been going to the film festivals himself, picking out films to buy, knowing what to push out there, and and it's just the the, the tip of the iceberg. Um, we there were all kinds of new footage shown at, at CinemaCon this week. There was a, a preview of uh, Boy Erased with Joel Edgerton and Lucas Hedges. Um, they had previews from a number of films, um, the coming from Paramount, including the new J.J. Abrams World War II thing that he swears I've, I've forgotten the title. It's a science fiction movie, but he swears and he swore. That it is not a Cloverfield film, even though it has been reported it is mm. for months. Um, he has been, I mean, they just got the time of their lives out there this week. Um, and Byron, the thing that I loved about him, who said, I don't want to talk about shorter windows. Because the biggest time, the biggest controversy over the last couple of years is the insistence of shorter windows between the theaters and pay-per-view. Um, at home, on demand and, 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 uh, you know, Prime and Netflix. He's like, the hell with 90. How about 120 days or 180 days? The exhibitors loved that. I have a feeling Ted Sarandors was not real happy. Well, the, the gentleman who runs Netflix. And, and, um, I mean, that's, that's a mogul saying this. So he's out there. Telling the theatrical companies, the distributors, the multiplex owners, and the independents, I'm on your side. Mm -hmm. For the last year, the studios have been slowly pulling back towards 60 days for distribution, which actually (coughs) Paramount started that a few years ago with that, uh, with that gimme back double deal that they did with the paranormal activity film and scouts and the what was it? Um, Scout's Guide to the Zombie, Zombie, Zombie Apocalypse. Apocalypse. A criminally underseen movie. Yeah, and and a lot of because a lot of theaters wouldn't carry it because of that that scheme. Yeah, and they've been hurting ever since. Paramount's been hurting. They're they're coming back. They've got two new Star Trek films in development. One with the first female director they've had, and the other with Quentin Tarantino, which was previously in, really announced. 
Cinema oh, that Con has some. So nervous. I know. Cinema Con has got some interesting things, and uh, you can check all all over the websites for the various news sites like IndieWire and the Playlist, uh, which has gotten considerably better since Kevin Jaggermuth moved on a couple months ago, um, and and a few other places, and check all their coverage of Cinema Con. Um, because it's an important thing to keep the distributors and these. these I, I'm sorry, I get so tired of fighting with people over on Tech Dirt about cinema. Cinema is important. Yes, you want your instant gratification with Netflix. Fine, that's great. Some movies are great. Elizabeth Olsen is really happy that her latest film went straight to Netflix. She believes that more people will see it that way. It, it started last Friday, mm-hmm. um, but. Most of the time, if you got a high profile movie, you're gonna wanna, you know, see it in a theater. Yeah. Now, that brings us to the other half of this discussion. We're over here now. Uh, well, not quite. We're still talking about Netflix. No, but I know, but we're over here now. Uh, okay. Um, Whee! we've been talking about how, I mean, there's been this whole big thing, especially since Spielberg and, and, uh, Christopher Nolan and a few other people have come out. Basically telling Netflix their movies are Emmys, not Oscars, Mm -hmm. because they're TV movies. Mm -hmm. We agreed with that, and I still agree with that philosophy, that if the movie premieres on Netflix, that makes it a TV movie. Yep. So now Ted Sarandos, the the, uh, CEO of Netflix, is quietly inquiring about purchasing a theater chain. Um, He wants to brand a Netflix theater chain. It would still play on Netflix day and date, but it would play theatrically in those, in the, whatever chain he ends up buying. Right. He had talks, brief talks with Mark Cuban, who owns the Landmark chain, and uh, they went nowhere. So basically, instead of being like, I don't know why he know, doesn't buy iPick, because iPick is already showing his films. He already has a deal with them. But Basically, instead of being like, well, I'm going to take my ball and go home, it's just going to be like, well, fine, then I'll buy the ballpark. I'll cheat. You know. Yeah. Which is actually a good thing because it does get the movies in theaters. And he would probably put them in all of them if they're Netflix branded theaters. Mm. But still, I think that's kind of the underway, underhanded it's way skeevy. into the into Will the you just say thing. it's skeevy? Well, it's not completely skeevy if he's willing to play ball that way. Mm. It means that he's going to try and have his cake and eat it too by doing things his own way. But if it benefits the cinemas, and if he buys the cinemas and shows other real theatrical films in addition to the Netflix films, maybe he'll get the idea of why people hate him so much when it comes to theatrical stuff. Maybe. He still hasn't made a deal with Khan yet, so I don't know. It's just an interesting development, and we'll keep our eyes on it over the next few weeks. One last thing about business stuff this week. Uh, a couple weeks ago, uh, an independent, uh, I think it was independent, uh, financial report, an independent audit of the parent company Helios and Matheson, which owns MoviePass, appeared to confirm the fears that the, the company cannot sustain its current business model. Now, Ned... Movie Pass until last Friday was offering nine ninety five a month subscriptions, way down from where they started several years ago when they were in the thirties and forties, and which was unlimited. You could see a movie a day, regular two D movie a day, every month, for no other price. You would just book it through Movie Pass and so on and so forth. Well, that's no longer true, and I think what they did on Friday is going to be the final nail in MoviePass's coffin. MoviePass has announced, and they have the right to do it because it said they had the right to change things in their little fine print, TOS, that that wonderful program where you could see a movie a day for a nine ninety five fee. Now that that's that's gone. It's four movies a month now for nine ninety five. Mm-hmm. Four movies a month, and you also forcibly get a subscription to iHeartRadio, which you have to call the people at iHeart to cancel if you don't want to keep the trial subscription. After 60 days, I think it is. 
Now, I, I'm like, okay, so people are telling you you're not making money, so you're going to cut back the benefits instead of raising the price. Mm-hmm. What the hell is wrong with this scenario? Mm. People are not going to... I, honestly, all those millions of fans that joined MoviePass in the last eight months since they started this, I'll guarantee you by the end of May, they're back down to their 2 million subscriber base from 9 million that they're at now. Mm. I'll guarantee you, people are not going to stay 995 members for four movies a month. I don't think so. I wouldn't. I mean, because, I mean, we know people in Clotrudis that have that movie pass. They use it to do their reviews and stuff. And and I would love to get it if they offered a couple's plan, which they don't do. Because it would mean we would never have to worry about f- funds for films. We could go whenever we want to, just go in, use the movie pass, book it, and, and be done. But they won't do a couple's plan. That's also the fatal flaw of, of Adam Tickets and why they are not going to last very long either. A-T-O-M Tickets, which is a company that I believe the main investor is Seth Rogen. Um, it, it has at least a little feature that will let you send a friend a notice that you bought a ticket and, hey, I've invited you to buy a ticket with me. So there's a window where they can get a ticket near you. MoviePass doesn't have that. Mm. Um, but, I mean, until Adam and MoviePass offer couples and family deals, they're just not going to be profitable. Nobody's going to want them. When it costs a family of four upwards of $200 to go to a film, if you go to a good 3D film, you have four people and you have concessions, tickets in will go with New York prices would be $96 for the tickets plus close to $100 for the concessions, popcorn, assuming a popcorn, drink, and a suite for everybody. Yeah. You're talking two hundred dollars for a night at the movies, and that's not even figuring if you have to have parking, yeah, that or if figure. you have to have a cab, that's or if good. you have I to pay the yeah. babysitter, or well, actually, <clears throat> if you have the kids with you, you wouldn't. We happen to be very lucky living in the Boston metro area. We have a, a ton of theaters at our disposal mm-hmm. on the T and on the bus, and we live what about a quarter mile from Showcase for yeah. Beer. So we have a giant, beautiful, wonderful, serviceable twenty theater, twenty screen theater. Just like two minutes down the road, mm-hmm. which is awesome. But, um, and I can't wait for Arclight to open. Arclight will open, it's supposed to be open in February, but they're, they're now talking October. So it's like, okay. What? Well, it's, it has to do with the construction. They have oh. to get the construction done. Yeah. It's part of the new um, North End, uh, what do they call that? Re- uh, renovation? Yeah, it's the renovations, but there's a name it's for it. It's gentrification, but don't tell them that. Yeah, it is. Uh, but it's part of North Station and the TD Garden, and it's all. It, it's going to be a... 15 screen arc light. We can't wait for it. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it, it just, movie, movie pass and Adam tickets don't get why they're not working. Adam is actually doing pretty good right now. And I think they could do even better if they add the couples of the family thing. So it makes it possible to buy two or four tickets at once rather than just one. Um, if there's no cost to be a member and you're paying regular fees. So mm-hmm. it's not like you're getting the huge discount that MoviePass is doing, and yet Adam Tickets is being more successful. Right. Do the math. Yeah. MoviePass is pretty much on a respirator. <laughs> I think it's time to mosey on out. We've had a lot of fun. We got to see the Avengers. We still haven't seen a lot of the other films we want to see, but we'll get to them eventually. Um, And we don't don't miss all of the other stuff we do here. Right now, I have an ongoing... uh, We have ongoing coverage on eCinema1.com, thekirkhamreport.com, and planetbibliomusica.com of the preparations and write-up to the 2018 Eurovision Song Festival. I did... In fact, the Kirkman Report will be making its video debut with its first YouTube episode tonight, later tonight as we're recording this. Mm -hmm. I hope. I'm not done with it yet. Um, i got to get the video stuff done. Um, But it's going to be my commentaries on each of the 43 songs that are entered this year and how much I like them or don't like them. And you can check all that out, plus the song-by-song preview of all 43 songs, some historical stuff coming in the next week, and coverage leading up to the two semifinals on May 8th and May 10th, available at Eurovision.tv, and the finals 
also on Eurovision TV, but also broadcast live on Logo here in America at 3 p.m. Eastern, 12 noon Pacific on May 12th. Mm -hmm. Plus, we got all of our usual stuff going on, Platinum Roses Garden. Yes, uh, Platinum Roses Garden is back this week, my Supernatural podcast, where I look at this past week's episode of Supernatural, and boy, did we get a great one this week. I am <laughs> reviewing the episode Unfinished Business over at PlatinumRosesGarden.com. I hope you'll check it out. And if you'd like to check out another show of mine, you can check out Ring Around the Rosie, which is my wrestling podcast, I at ringaroundtherosie.net. Usually I try and be kind of fun and wacky over there, but this week I did get a little serious talking about the WWE's latest pay, uh, pay-per-view, which was available only on their network, uh, it, taking place in Saudi Arabia, and um, the all the controversy around that. If mm -hmm. you'd like to check that out, over at ringaroundtherosie.net. And TC's got some great solo shows, too. Uh, yes, Catastrophe Vortex will be back this week. I have got... My list done, and we will be counting up the top dozen favorite episodes of Seconds from Disaster. We will also be uh, bringing you our weekly uh, release shows, Tuesday Digidex Home Video on Tuesdays, Three Minute Weekend Theatrical Releases on Friday. Plus, as I said, I'm debuting the new Kirkham Report show on YouTube. It's mm -hmm. YouTube only. If you don't subscribe, you need to go over there and see it, too, because it's a video show with video clips and video commentary. Um, you'll have to be on YouTube to see it. Mm -hmm. So go check us out at our YouTube site. You can get to the link uh, on our site. Also, don't forget our other shows, Co Comic Grotto with Aunt B and Pee Wee at ComicGrotto.com and uh, uh, Cave Babble with Eric and Valerie Lyon at CaveBabble.com and uh, having great shows from those two people yep. as well. Uh, we also have a couple of other shows that are part of our family that are separate from us, but we, well, we are doing them, but they're mm -hmm. you know different right. shows. Uh, we have Front Row Five and Ten, which, which is you can our get right here our on list. This feed. Yeah, with our list show where we'll do a, a list of ten things or two groups of five from all kinds of different categories, <sighs> and we have a lot of fun with that. This week is a list I picked. Well, um, let's not go into that because mm -hmm. people might list, listen later and not and get mm -hmm. confused. But yeah, we do have that, and that's right on the Subject Cinema feed. And our first original production, which involved everybody in PNR Networks, Manhattan Hammerdown, as it happened, is available at ManhattanHammerdown.com. It is a full-length feature, uh, uh, dramatic presentation featuring everybody mm -hmm. from the PNR Networks, and it is our 10th anniversary tribute to Cloverfield. Please go over and check it out. It's a true, and let other people know it's there also at ManhattanHammerdown.com. It's a true labor of love written by him over here, and it was really a lot to work with and really great. I think it came out really, really well. I think it did too, and I hope people really like it. Um, we'll be back next week, hopefully mm -hmm. at the regular time on Saturday. We're a day late this week. Um, I know we will not be on Saturday in two weeks, we will be back on Sunday in two weeks because Saturday is the live Eurovision final, and we will mm -hmm. be covering that. I'm still not sure if we're get, we're talking about maybe doing a live snark of it on uh, one of the sites. Um, maybe what about that new site that you hooked up with on online? Um, I haven't quite figured out how that works yet. Okay, well we'll figure. It's it a out. neat site, but I'm like lots of buttons. And we way. also, mm -hmm. uh, you know, always bring you all kinds of information. And don't forget to watch uh, East Cinema One for all the latest movie news and mm -hmm. East Cinema Boston with our co continuing coverage of Boston Springs the Festival, which will start on Subject Cinema next weekend. Uh, as we start recapping the films and the various festivals they're in. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's the festivals and the various films they're in. Hoo-hoo-hoo. Ah, it's been a long day. Anyway, you know all the stuff we got. Always remember, read, subscribe, share. And if you're on YouTube, don't forget to hit the notification bell so you'll know when we have new stuff up. Is mm -hmm. that everything? I think that's it. All right. <laughs> For Subject Cinema, I'm T.C. Kirkham. I'm Kim Brown. May your popcorn always be buttered. And may your roses always be in bloom. Avengers Assemble! You've been wanting to say that all week. You have been listening to Subject Cinema with hosts T.C. Kirkham and Kim Brown. Subject Cinema is produced by PNR Networks, Boston, Massachusetts, which is solely responsible for its content. Subject Cinema theme performed by Eric Lyon. Subject Cinema is recorded and produced using Sony Vegas products. Subject Cinema is copyright 2009-2010.
2017 by PNR Networks under a Creative Commons license. Check out a new episode of Subject Cinema every weekend. Until next time, this is Bob Taylor for Subject Cinema, and we'll see you at the movies. That's all! Podcasting's choice. From coast to coast, continent to continent, right here 24-7. The